This uh, look you see on my face is confusion. The movie was actually created out of two towns, Bodega Bay, where I am, and the actual town of Bodega, which is about seven miles from here. Hitchcock changed the geography of this entire area. Making a town was like rearranging the furniture. He envisioned a dense, bustling community at the edge of the bay, and if the geography couldn't accomplish that, production techniques could. Hitchcock was a guy that liked to sit. I can understand that. I've been known to enjoy the sedentary arts. Basically, his films were created from his armchair. That was Hitchcock's true genius. With storyboards and production diagrams, he could visualize an entire feature film on paper. I mean, who does that? I do. In fact, here's a storyboard of this shot right here. Uh, here's me on the wharf, and there's the bird right there. Uh, that's a close-up of me, and this is a shot of me holding my storyboard, which is really eerie. <laughs> I uh, wonder why Hitchcock picked this place. Here it is. The wharf where Tippy Hedren boards the boat to head over to Brenner's farm. I mean, this is amazing. This place looks exactly the same way it did in 1963. And to think that Hitch and Tippy stood right here, I mean, she got down that ladder. And that's the Tides Wharf restaurant. And here's me. I'm part of the movie. Sorry. We're at the Tides Wharf complex, the central location of the movie. Now, by my calculations, the phone booth should be right here. But remember in the movie, Tippy comes running out of the restaurant, flying and getting away from the birds, and she's doing all this and everything, and that guy comes up and he slams his face right into the camera. <laughs> then out of nowhere, a horse-drawn carriage runs through the scene. I don't even know why that happened. It was right here. Or was it over there? At the time of filming, the original Tides was owned by Mitch Zankich. Mitch let Hitchcock use the restaurant motel complex under a couple of conditions. He wanted the main character to be named after himself. So Rod Taylor's character in the movie became Mitch Brenner. What happened, Mitch? And he wanted a speaking part Go in the film. Go. There's the back of Mitch's head right there. Nice. Meet Marco Galazzo, the restaurant manager. If you need to know anything about the Tides, this is your man. Well, here we are at the Tides Wharf Complex. Yeah. And, uh, wow, you guys have a lot of stuff here. Well, behind us here, we have our fish market. We sell fresh fish, uh, we sell wine, local cheeses, fresh bread from local bakeries. We have a gift shop for people that want to get a souvenir. Now, what type of impact did the birds have on the, on the restaurant? Alfred Hitchcock had read the short story by Daphne du Maurier about a flock of birds that's yep. supposedly demonized and yep. takes over a small town. He was traveling through the area, stopped at the Tides, which was an already an established restaurant. Gotcha. And while enjoying a cup of coffee, he was looking out the window at some birds that were nesting over the uh, phone booth. And every time somebody would go to use the phone booth, the birds would attack them. <laughs> and he said, what a perfect place where I can make the movie that I wanted to make. Um, this is Hazel Mitchell when she was a waitress at the Tides. And you'll notice the waitress up here. Yes. Hazel with the glasses. Uh, for years and years, Hazel told everybody that that was her <laughs> in the movie. She finally confessed to me a couple years before her death that she couldn't be in the movie because she didn't have a SAG card. But Alfred Hitchcock found actors that looked like the real people in Bodega Bay, and Hazel had been his waitress every day when he was having lunch during filming, so he made I sure like that the waitress looked just like Hazel. <laughs> That's great. Bodega Bay is one of the top bird watching spots on the western coast. Now, what are the odds uh, of us getting attacked out here? Uh, pretty good on the other side of the building. The, the little blackbirds are nesting, and those are the birds that Alfred Hitchcock saw attacking people in the phone booth. Well, let's go get attacked. Let's go. They've got nests all in these trees. There will be about 15 of them that work together. One stays on top of the gas station. One stays on top of the sign that says the Inn at the Tides. They don't usually bother the people that are visiting. OK. But because I'm walking through their territory constantly, they know who I am. They don't so like me. Gee, what was that? <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for the bird attack. <laughs> Something told me this was going to happen. <laughs> Meet Joel Hack, editor and publisher of The Birds by Hitchcock. He owns a treasure trove of material on the birds. Wow, you have a lot of stuff. This is mostly the publicity material surrounding the movie itself, The Birds. This collection really gives you a sense of Hitchcock's flair for promotion, along with other interesting finds. I got a package of pictures from somebody who was on the set during the filming, who, with their own personal camera, a Minox 16, took dozens of pictures. Oh. 
This is a program from okay. when The Birds was distributed in Japan. Why do you think the movie played well even in other languages? It played well in almost every language because it's, it's uh, universal. It's scary because it's about things that we don't have control over that are smarter than we are. Wow, and there's even still more to go through, believe it or not. All right, now, wait, now we gotta pack it all up. What? <laughs> now it's time to pay a visit to the farm across the bay. You remember Mitch's family farm, don't you? No? Well, let's review. Tippy arrives in Bodega Bay with the lovebirds. Oddly, she decides to deliver the birds to Mitch unnoticed by crossing the bay to the farm in a small skiff. Like no one would notice a jet-setting hottie draped in fur gliding across an expansive bay. But you have to admit, it's one of film history's most unforgettable moments. Well, for my trip across the bay, I couldn't find a boat like Tippy used in the movie. But, well, that's so old school. I'm being new school by my accessory man, Surfer Bob. I always wanted a surfer dude as a friend. Don't worry, it's right. gonna be good. I have a wetsuit here for you. You can throw that on kind of halfway up. I'll try a wetsuit. You did see what size I am, right? It's very stretchy. You might want to go right straight down to your uh, briefs. <laughs> you help me with that? Uh, I can hold the towel, I guess. <laughs> Sweet. The other stuff I'll let you take care of. <laughs> right. Does this suit make me look fat? No, not at all. Cool. Actually, all right, make good. Look, uh, Svelte? Solid. Maybe I should put on two. If anything, your top half will go down and at least your legs will know we can grab we, on. You can see me? Yeah. Thank you. My confidence is growing <laughs> by the second. <laughs> what, what would a true surfer say um, right now just before we head out? Um, let's see. A true surfer would say, it looks good. Let's go ahead and attack. It's good, man. All right. Let's go ahead and attack. Got to bring some birds. Paddle up to the shoulder. I'm up. And then give me a nice little bam, oh. bam, bam, bam. That's exactly it. And that's the way you should be on the boat. One, two, three. Oh. And he's out there. We've been scouring the shoreline for hours, only to discover the farm was nothing but a movie set. Here's the actual location, but the set burned down two years after the film was completed. My dreams of settling down in a bird-infested farmyard, gone. Well, I think I've had my fill of the bay. It's time to head inland to the town of Bodega. Coming up, I found the most popular thing to do at the Potter Schoolhouse. And later, I teach some school children how to have a flight of fantasy. <laughs> 